At this point, we've become familiar with Faraday's law of induction. We've learned about how changing flux can induce an EMF. And we learned that we could determine the magnitude of this induced EMF using our formula E equals negative N change in flux over change in time. And we recall that we made a quick mention of the negative out front here, that it indicates that an induced EMF is in the opposite direction to the change in flux that induces it. It's a mouthful. What does this mean exactly? In this tutorial, we'll clarify this negative and we'll explain Lenz's law. Consider this conductive loop in a magnetic field. The magnetic field lines are shown in purple. And we recall that a loop sitting in a constant magnetic field like this has flux, but no EMF. We need a change in the flux to induce the EMF. So, let's give some time here and we'll increase the magnetic field strength. We'll use longer magnetic field lines to indicate that BF is greater in magnitude than BI. And we think if we had the area of this loop, the BF and the BI, and the time taken for the change, we could quickly use our equation and determine the magnitude of this induced EMF, thanks to Faraday. But what about the direction here? Let's start with a guess. What if the induced EMF created a current going in the counterclockwise direction? Well, that seems like a reasonable guess, right? Okay, so let's consider the implications of going in this counterclockwise direction. Well, we know that current, whether induced or not, creates a magnetic field around it. We can use our right-hand rule to determine the direction of this induced magnetic field. Now, might seem a bit confusing at this point. We have a changing magnetic field, which induces an EMF, so current flows, and this current in turn induces a magnetic field. Yeah, electromagnetism. It's all around us. But back to our problem. Right hand rule. And our thumb is in this direction, in the direction of the current, and our fingers would curl around the conductor like this. And we can see that our fingers and induced magnetic field would be going to the left on the outside of the loop and to the right as it passes through the middle of the loop. So our induced magnetic field would add to our increasing magnetic field BF and make it increase even more. Now we have an even bigger change in magnetic field, which in turn would cause a greater change in flux, right? And a bigger change in flux means that we'd have a bigger, well, can you predict? A bigger flux means a bigger EMF again. So even more current. And more current again causes what? A bigger magnetic field. And we get even a bigger change in flux, which causes, well, you get the pattern. It's a continuous loop of increasing energy. This never-ending loop would continue until everything blows up. And we continue to exist, so we know that the universe doesn't work this way. Clearly, our assumed direction was wrong. So, back to the drawing board. And this time, let's assume that the induced EMF creates a current going in the clockwise direction. And again, we know that current, induced or not, creates a magnetic field around it. We'll use our right-hand rule to determine the direction of this induced magnetic field. With our thumb going clockwise with the current, and our fingers curling around the conductor like this, we can see that our fingers, an induced magnetic field, would be going to the right on the outside of the loop and to the left on the inside of the loop, through the middle of the loop. So, this time, our induced magnetic field opposes the increase of our magnetic field. It resists the change. So the resulting magnetic field would be smaller and the induced EMF would decrease and things would lean towards an equilibrium. Definitely not blowing up this time. Energy is conserved. It makes a lot more sense, and the universe continues, thankfully. So, that's Lenz's law. An induced electric current flows in a direction such that the current opposes the change that induced it. 
returning to our formula, and we can better appreciate the negative out front here. This negative can be used to track the vector nature of fields through all the calculations, but most people just carry the negative through to the end, and they use it to remember to use Lenz's law should they need to determine the direction of the resulting EMF. To overview, Faraday's law tells us how to determine the magnitude of the induced EMF, while Lenz's law allows us to predict the direction of the induced EMF.